Yong Ye is the wolf blitzer of gaming journalism on YouTube. I don't know about you, but I don't have much time to follow up on everything. I go to Yong Ye's channel. I know he's going to give me the important news of the day. And perhaps if I don't know how to feel about it, he'll tell me how to feel about it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am Montoya. I run a Star Citizen organization. As you can imagine, it's been a rough couple of days being a backer of Star Citizen. More so, the conflict I fell inside when I went to watch Yong Ye's latest video and he is slamming Star Citizen, jumping on that hate train. It wasn't easy. Before we kick off, a serious note here. Sid Alpha got some death threats. Now I, and on behalf of the entire Star Citizen community strongly condemn these kind of activities. We do not tolerate it on our own forums. We don't tolerate it on Reddit. And it's not tolerated on the RSI, the official forums of Star Citizen. In no way do these kind of actions represent the backers of Star Citizen. So, uh, Sid Alpha, I hope whoever did this comes to justice and I hope the investigation leads somewhere. That said, let's kick off some commentary from Yong Ye and see what he has to say. Roll it. It should be abundantly clear at this point that Star Citizen isn't a game about rewarding players for investing their time and energy into the game. It's about rewarding those who spend the most money. There is no even playing field. This is going to be an ongoing theme in his entire video. Star Citizen rewards those who spend the most money. There is no even playing field. I'm not sure what he's advocating for here. Space communism? Maybe some MMO communism because there is no even playing field in any MMO. Name me one MMO where it's an even playing field. Is Dota considered an MMO? Uh, EVE Online, World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls, there is no even playing field. There's always going to be people more powerful than you at the start of the game. It is clear that Cloud Imperium's priorities are way off kilter, corrupted by greed, constantly delaying the game and its features and drawing out its development to focus more on new ways to monetize players. I actually answered this exact point in my previous video, that people think that CIG has some sort of cash cow that simply selling ships every month will bring them more money than actually releasing a final game. Here's the math behind it. CIG needs roughly $30 million for the year to function as they are right now. Here's my question to you. When Squadron 42, the single player aspect of Star Citizen is released, will they make $30 million from the sale in the game? Will they make $30 million that week or that month? I can tell you with full confidence, they will make more than $30 million in sales of that game. So to justify that they are stalling the game just to stell, sell more ships and make it last longer is nonsense because they will make a lot more money by selling the actual finished game. Frankly, the very notion of asking players $28,000 for the option to skip playing a significant portion of a game is ludicrous enough as it is. There's two parts to this uh, statement here. Let's go to the first one. Frankly, the very notion of asking players for $27,000... All right, CIG is not asking anyone for $27,000. It doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't appeal to 99.9% .9 of the backers out there. When they put up a $5,000 package, they're asking me for money. They're not asking anyone for money. In fact, if you want to play this alpha, if you want to pledge, if you want to back this project, it is $45. That is all it is. And they're not asking you for $45. It's a pledge. If you want to give them $45, you can. And you get the Aurora starter pack or the Mustang starter pack. Great little ships. That is what you get. They can ask for $50. They can ask for $100,000. It doesn't make a difference what they ask because nobody needs it. It's not a need. But the second part there is the option to skip playing significant portion of the game. That is a fair comment. And I think it comes down to essentially what is your time worth? Majority of the backers backing Star Citizen are in the 25 to early 30 range, probably more because that poll was taken a while ago. I would say late 20s to early 30s. These are young professionals. These are people who probably have more money than they have time. Now, if you want to jump right into the game and avoid the grind, that is up to you. You are the one 
missing out. And I'm going to tell this to Clifford when I speak to him. That's the guy who bought the $27,000 package. I'm saying you played yourself. (laughs) You did, because now you missed out the whole part about earning the ships in the game. The whole part of the game is to earn your way through, make money, and buy yourself the bigger ships. And if you want to skip that, that's your fault. You're missing out. So the people buying these packages are ruining the game for themselves, and that's it. that at this pace things will keep getting worse. I wouldn't be shocked to see Cloud Imperium take things a step further by eventually selling forty or $50,000 packs. I agree with uh, Yong Ye on this one. I actually kind of hinted towards this in my last video where I talked about uh, the game Entropia and they sold a $6 million planet. That's right, they sold an entire planet for $6 million. Uh, a very different kind of game. But what I'm getting at here with what CIG did with this package, the $27,000 package, there's no backpedaling. So my recommendation was them to go forward. And you know what? Sell a space station for $100,000. Sell a moon for $1 million. Hey, AMD, do you want some... Uh, some advertising, go buy a moon. That's what they should do because you know what? At this point, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't appeal to me. They're not appealing to 99.999% of the backers who don't have this kind of money. But if you do have this kind of money, there's an option for you. No one is forcing anyone to buy anything. Stay as far away from this long con of a game as humanly possible, at least until the developer starts showing some semblance of caring about achieving substantial progress and releasing the conceptually compelling game in some final form as promised. Uh, Look, I don't agree with some of his wording there, but I will agree with the message of what he's saying. Shocking, I know, but hear me out. My neighbor, two houses down. (coughs) Excuse me. Console peasant, (laughs) console player. Why do I say no? I have consoles too. He's a console player, but he recently upgraded to a PC and he asked me, he said, Montoya, should I buy that Star Citizen game? You know what I said? No. I said, listen, if you want to buy a game to have some fun in and play right now, it's not Star Citizen. There's so many other games. Buy Far Cry. Buy Destiny 2. I'm playing Destiny 2 right now. I'm loving it. There's so many other games to have fun in. Star Citizen is an alpha. It is buggy. It won't run well on your computer. The game is unoptimized. If you want to have fun, buy something else. If you want to buy Star Citizen or Squadron 42, wait for them to release a more polished product. Maybe you want to jump in at patch 3.3 or 3.4, whatever it is, when there's more things to do in the game. There's not much to do in the game right now besides traveling around and maybe trading or fighting. There's more coming down the pipeline, but if you're looking to get the most bang from your buck, play something else. Come to Star Citizen when it's ready. So, shocker, I'm agreeing with Yong Ye on what he's saying, but not some of the wording of that. And if you're just an average Joe who plans to spend a minimal amount of money, I say what's the point when the scales are so blatantly stacked against you? Again, this ties into the very beginning of what you said there, and I don't get it. If you are an average Joe who plans to, who plans to spend a minimal amount of money, I say what's the point when the scales are blatantly stacked against you? All right. If you want to go play EVE right now, what's the point? Because the scales are blatantly What's the word? Stacked against you. There are players who've been in E for 15 years, have the biggest, most powerful ships. What's the point of you going to play EVE right now? There's no point. You shouldn't even bother. World of Warcraft, another one. There are players playing World of Warcraft with the best gear, the highest leveled characters. What's the point of you going to play World of Warcraft right now? There are people so much stronger than you. There's no point. Elder Scrolls Online. There's no point in you going to play any MMO in the world because there's people in there that are more powerful than you right now. I know what Yongye is getting at. I disagree. He's thinking kind of a Hunger Games model where everyone just comes up out of the ground on day one and everyone's even, and then you get to fire it out and see who survives. That's not what Star Citizen is going to be. There's going to be a beta. There's going to be people establishing themselves. When you as a new player come into the game in your little tiny Aurora, you are not going up against that guy with all the biggest ships in the game. You will be in a safe area where you get to start off and build yourself up. And when you are ready, you move on to the other dangerous areas like in any MMO. These are my thoughts on the matter. Now... I think that's pretty much it. So let's wrap it up. Uh, Comment section, what do you think about this? Let me know. Post your comments below. 
Uh, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe, uh, pass along to your friends. That'll be great. Thumbs up. And if you want to support my Patreon, there it is right there. I'll see you in the next one.